These are the English and American versions of the same book of my book on numbers. The English version, Alex's Adventures in Numberland, which was the first title I came up with. But then when we took it to the American publishers, they said, who's Alex? Not going to work in America. So we came up with another one, which is kind of funnier. He is looking at Euclid, which when I then suggested to the British publishers, they said, well, who's Euclid? So it actually works really well for both different territories. Because in America, it seems that everyone has heard of Euclid. And I'm not sure, I'm never sure if this is because Americans have better geometry lessons or if it's because Euclid appears a lot more in street names than city names in the US. Actually, my theory is that the reason why the Americans name cities and streets after Euclid is because the founding fathers were Masons and the Masons were big into geometry. I studied maths and philosophy at university, but then I became a journalist, and then I ended up as a foreign correspondent in Brazil. And so when I decided to write about maths, I decided to write about maths in the way that a foreign correspondent would write. So I travelled all around the world interviewing different people to do with numbers and maths, and it seemed to me that, in a sense, I was doing just what I was doing as a foreign correspondent, but I wasn't going to any one country. I was going to a kind of fictitious country, Numberland. So in the same way that when I was in Brazil, um, I would fly to the Amazon and do a report and then explain it to people who'd never been there. In Numberland, I kind of fly to the land of algebra or the land of geometry, explain it, come back and give a report to it, explain it to people who don't really understand the land of algebra or geometry, um, and explain how it is. So I was also lucky that I've had about 20 translations and I've got some of them here which has been done. So we start here with Italian, Il meraviglioso mondo dei numeri. There are lots of books around and there are lots of books on numbers but I guess I felt there was a gap in the market for a book about numbers that was accessible to the lay reader in a way that other books haven't been. You know, there have been books written aimed at the lay reader um, and some of them which have been very successful, but nothing really that's been written by a news reporter. Alex au pays des chiffres, which is the French one. Alex en el pays de los números, which is the Spanish one. I hoped it would work. I didn't know whether it would. I thought maybe one of the reasons why it hasn't been done before is that it's impossible to do. But actually, using reportage and journalism to write about maths, I think works. And I think I have brought a new audience, even if that audience is quite small, a new audience to buying books about maths. And definitely if you read the comments or that, that, that come back, the feedback about the book, you know, you do get lots of people saying, oh my God, I've never been interested in maths before, but I read this and, you know, it's quite interesting. Kietova Matematica, with a little joke on pie there, which is Finnish. Alex no País dos Números, from Brazil. Always when I'm writing, I'm thinking, you know, could the man on the street read this? You know, maybe a slightly educated man on the street, because there are lots of people who you just put a number in there and they don't understand it at all. But could someone who, you know, if you can read Freakonomics and understand it, if you can read the financial pages of a newspaper, if you can, if you've got GCSE maths, you should be able to get quite a lot out of what I write. That's the aim. Gittelen on Drudsild, or Gittelen maybe, which is Dutch, and that's the American, he's looking at Euclid. Pace is very difficult because you need to go slow enough to take everyone with you but not so slow that people who understand it get a little bit bored. So how do you do that? You need to kind of sugar the pill by including lots of interesting kind of colour and observation, but you can't have too much of that because it looks like you're, you're just, it's just filler. Essentially what you need is you need a really strong narrative. You need people to want to know what's going to happen. And actually my favourite is the German one, which is here. Alex im Wunderland der Zahlen, because it's got this fantastic picture of me kind of surfing in abacus in my slippers. I don't know which picture they used, but... Um... I've got you there, and let me zoom in on, on the... Oh, yeah. 
there, and uh, yeah, that looks a bit like you. It is said that the minute you put an equation in a piece of text, you lose half the readers. I don't think that's true if you put it in, you know, if you build up the equation, then you explain it well enough. But still, you can't have that many equations. There's always got to be more words than there are numbers or uh, equations per page. And that can be quite difficult because maths naturally has lots of numbers and equations in it. Is your book about numbers or is your book about maths? No, my book is about maths. And I started to write my book about maths without having a title for it. And it was only halfway through that the title came up. But even though my book's about maths, most people think, well, maths and numbers are the same thing. So, you know, the first hundred pages of my book is really about numbers, the birth of numbers, where do they come from, people who, uh, tribes that don't have numbers, um, animals that understand numbers, base systems, why we count up to 10 and not, not 12, say, or, or eight. So I think that numbers is essentially where math starts. And in any book about maths, you need to kind of cover that area. But actually maths is about, you know, structure and pattern and logic and proofs and elegance and all those other things. And sometimes the thing, the thing with numbers is that numbers in themselves are actually quite dry, that you need to use numbers to explain other things. When you look back and read the book now, yeah. are there things you wish you'd done differently? Are there things you look at and go, I could have done that better? Or do you look at it and think, I'm happy with that? Um, I think you ask most writers, what do they think when they read their books? They just cringe with embarrassment. So you, it's not so far in the past that I don't look at it and think, oh, I should have done that bit better. That's not quite good enough. Um, but actually, in terms of sales and reviews and acclaim, I can't complain. So I guess I must be happy with it.